Here I was on a nice Saturday afternoon thinking that I'm just gonna review a simple ESP Viper, but no, this turned out to be one of the most modified guitars that I have ever seen and tried. The EMG 89R is just one of many interesting mods that this ESP Viper has. This Viper belongs to a good friend of mine and he requested a Rammstein riff for the intro. This is for you my friend. <laughs> This is not the first Viper that I've tried. I've already reviewed the LTD Volsung and the LTD Grinch. I'm yet to review the baritone version of this. To better explain how the Viper feels, I have to compare it to the Gibson HG Custom that I've reviewed a couple of months ago. The best way to describe the Viper is with an analogy between the Eclipse and the Les Paul ESP and Gibson. Just like the Eclipse is a modernized version of the Les Paul, the Viper is a modernized version of the HG. Even though the Viper and the HG might look similar, they feel quite different. The Viper of course has 24 frets and much better high fret axis. It also has a better balance than the HG. And it comes with active pickups. With all that in mind, would I prefer a Viper over an HG? Well, they're different enough to justify owning both. This is a heavily modified Viper and I'm gonna walk you through the specs as they were originally meant to be. Mahogany body, you got a set true neck with a one piece mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard, 24 extra jumbo frets, 12 inch radius, 24.75 inch scale length. The original tuners were Goto top locking black nickel. The original pickup set were EMG 85 at the bridge, 81 at the neck. The factory bridge and tailpiece were the Japanese made Goto Black Nickel Locking. They are still included with this particular Viper. Now for the modified specs. These are also Goto Top Locking, but these are considerably lighter as I will demonstrate a little bit later. The pickups are the original EMG85 at the bridge and the EMG89R at the neck, which is pretty special as I will explain in a minute. The stock bridge and tailpiece were Goto, now they are replaced with Gold Tone Pro Locking. The knobs for the pots were also replaced. These are the original black nickel ones. Now you have a black for the split of the 89R EMG and a gold for the afterburner. The pickup cavities are absolutely immaculate as you would expect from an ESP made in Japan. These remind me of the Japanese made ESP snake bites that I have reviewed. Even the ground wires are in the same position. Another small detail that I absolutely love on these Japanese made TSPs. Look at these seam lines here. They are using a piece of wood to cover the neck joint, but they are making it absolutely flush with the cavity of the pickup. Allow me to explain the pickup situation because it's certainly interesting in this guitar. In the bridge position we have the EMG85 which is stock for this Viper. Most of you owned one, no surprises here. The neck is where it gets interesting and in the neck position we have the EMG 89R. R stands for reversed, I'm gonna bring the specs on screen and explain why my friend chose this pickup. These are the official specs of the EMG 89R. The 89R is similar to the 89 but the coils are reversed so that the single coil side is closer to the neck to capture the sweet spot Strat fans love. The single coil on the normal 89 is on this side, the 89R reverse it to be on this side. Why is this necessary? Well, it's simple, we have a 24.75 inch scale length but you have 24 frets, meaning that this pickup is already pushed towards the bridge. Having the 89R puts the single coil in the sweet spot compensating 
for the lost space due to the 24 frets. Pretty clever thinking on behalf of EMG there. The fun doesn't end here though. This 89R split and then boosted by the EMG afterburner gets some amazing results. With all of the modification this almost has the versatility of Fishman pickups. It sounds like two guitars in one humbuckers and single coil like almost Telecaster sound. Here's a closer look of the EMG 89R, it has this copper EMG emblem. On the back the designation EMG 89R made in September of 2021, made in USA of course. It has double the amount of pins because it features two preamps built into it. Here is your typical EMG 85 with the gold logo. A bit of a surprise for me is that this was made all the way back in 2003 and the Viper was made in 2007, so this sat in a warehouse somewhere and then was put in it. Here's a better look of the pickups with the quick connect system and look at the massive plug of the EMG 89R compared to the 85. With all of the modifications, the split, the afterburner, the ATV mode, I didn't expect to get a reading from the pickups and I don't. This Viper was perfectly set by the person who modified it, so I'm gonna try and save the setup. Luckily, I have the Tone Pro locking bridge and tailpiece, and I've unlocked them just to demonstrate. This is the tailpiece, gold, locks through those 1.5mm bolts, and it says Tone Pro on the bottom. Metric, screwdriver and thumb wheel adjustable. Same goes for the tailpiece, locking, 1.5mm bolt, Tone Pro on the bottom, gold. Another reminder to tighten those or you'll end up losing them. The top features a couple of comfort colorways that I'm used to seeing on Vipers. This big one, one on the top horn, high fret axis on the low horn and one on the bottom. The set true mahogany neck with ebony fingerboard has these extra jumbo frets that were immaculately done. This is Japanese craftsmanship after all. It has white binding on the neck, black side dot inlays, mother of pearl dot inlays on the fingerboard and the 12th fret is also mother of pearl with ESP black letters written on it. This is the original bone nut and it seemed to have cracked the polyurethane finish a little bit. This is purely cosmetic, not a problem. The headstock has the same white binding as the neck, the typical ESP waving flag shape, the Viper logo in gold and the ESP logo in white. The typical for the ESP is white truss rod cavity with the one-way Gibson style truss rod. It is similar to my ESP Iron Cross. This is the cover for the truss rod, white on the bottom, black, gloss on the top, held in place by a single screw. The nut is 42.5mm or 1.67 inch wide. The 12th fret is at 51.8mm or 2.03 inches. Thickness of the first fret is 21mm or 0.82 inch. Thickness of the 12th fret, 22.6mm or 0.88 inch. The thickness of the body where there are no cutaways is 46mm or 1.81 inch. The fingerboard radius feels somewhere in between 12 and 14 inches. The neck profile is comfortable thin C. The back of the body is certainly interesting with a lot of going on for this guitar. Starting with the shape, there are a lot of cutaways on the back. Here on the bottom, high fret axis one, the set through neck construction given a high fret axis as well, and the big one at the top. The strap button had been moved to the upper horn and the original one is here at the back giving better balance. These are one of the lowest profile possible LOX brand strap locks. The back features two compartments, one is for the electronics and the other is for the 9 volt battery and if you watch my videos you've already seen this one on the ESP Snake Bites, the ESP Iron Cross and multiple other guitars. This 2007 Viper is probably one of the earliest models to include this new style of battery box. Why then would we have another 8 volt battery into the compartment? Well it is because this Viper features an 18 volt mod. It is supposed to give your EMG pickups more dynamic range, but I'm yet to confirm that I haven't tried it 9V then 18 then back to 9. I guess we'll do that in another video. The second 9V battery out of the way reveals the split volume pot for the 89R and it looks like something that I wouldn't try wiring myself, looks over complicated. It's not on a quick connect as well so I wouldn't do it myself. Then there's the 3-way switch and this was a surprise, this is the new EMG afterburner. 
it is designated AB220. The surprise is that this is on a quick connect system. I've already seen it in the LTD Grinch, but that was a 2003 model, so it's normal to be soldered on. The AB220 is the newer version and this is the first time I'm trying it out. These are the two available versions of the afterburner, the AB being the original one and the AB220 the new version. I had an issue with the operation of the original AB. When the push-pull pot is on the down position, there is no boost and the control has no effect. In the up position, rotating the pot can boost the input up to 20 decibels, meaning that you have to pull up for the afterburner to work. Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> For me personally, the push-pull operation of the afterburner was extremely uncomfortable and they vastly improved it with the AB220 where the boost starts when you rotate the pot. It also features two distinctive positions, one at plus 8 decibels and one at plus 15. In addition to that, the new AB220 is with the quick connect system, they didn't change the photo on the official website though. Here is that sweet 8 and 15 decibel click. And that's all the way up. The set through neck construction of the mahogany neck gives you a better high fret axis and feels comfortable. The neck has a glossy finish to it and a volute near the headstock. The headstock features the ESP standard series logo and the serial number SS standing for standard series 07 is the year 2007. The tuners on this one had been replaced and they are goto top locking but they are certainly interesting. This is the first time I've seen this. At first I thought the buttons were replaced but no, they are stock like this and then I'm gonna show you how they look like outside of the guitar. My friend buys a lot of hardware from this website Guitar Parts Center and the goto tuners are bought from here. They are designated goto HG301 P4B MG and they look like this stock. This is what the Goto tuner looks outside of the guitar, says Goto Japan and this is what the locking mechanism looks like, Goto on the back and these are the original knobs, they are not replaced. They are a little bit lighter too as I will demonstrate in a second. This is the original tuner, same mechanism, Goto Japan, same locking, black nickel, Goto on the back but these are considerably heavier. I'm gonna weigh these two with the entire assembly, the washer and the nut on them. First is the original black nickel Goto. It weighs 36 grams. Now let's weigh the replacement Goto gold and black. Let's see if I'm imagining things. Nope, 29 grams. 7 grams difference. Now multiply this by 6 and you almost get 50 grams. I think the base mechanisms are the same in both tuners, just the buttons are different. This feels like plastic, the original feels like aluminum or metal. Since we are on the subject of hardware, which one would you prefer, the black nickel or the replacement gold? The setup on this Viper was perfect and I managed to save it with the help of the Locking Tone Pro Bridge Intel piece. Now I just have to put the same gauge strings that it had before I removed them. It is not that simple, like everything else on this guitar the strings are modified as well. So my friend wants a 1154 set, but he doesn't like the 22 plane third string on the beef slinky. He prefers the 18 plane or the on the burly slinkies. But he doesn't like the 52 on the burly, he wants a 54. So he's gonna use the burly slinkies and a separate 54 string, making this a custom gauge. My friend uses a lot of custom gauges for his instruments. He has a 7 string acoustic baritone, imagine how he finds strings for that. So I'm gonna use the burly slinkies with the custom gauge to set it in D standard. The way you restring those top locking tuners is you rotate the top part of the locking mechanism so the hole is completely visible and not blocked by the pin. You angle it towards the nut and then you get the string through it. When you start to rotate, the tuner will lock itself. At first the string will not wind, it will catch on the locking mechanism and then it will start. The case seems a little bit dirty, let me see if I can do something about it with the amping case. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> there we go, much better, nice and shiny. The ESP Viper has this original ESP case with 3 latches and a sturdy leather handle. 
It is made to specifically fit the Viper shape like this. It has this compartment that holds strings and certain tools and hardware. The Viper has a similar weight to the HG Custom that I reviewed at 3311 grams or 7.29 pounds, but it's much better balanced. Now let's hear how it sounds. thoughts about the Viper. It feels great, plays great, sounds amazing and it's well made, it's Japanese after all. All the added modifications, the 18 volt mode, the EMG afterburner, the EMG 89R with the split make it like you have two guitars in one. Now I cannot 100% say that I felt the benefits of the 18 volt mode but I certainly felt the benefits of having the EMG 89 reversed in there. My friend told me, George, make sure you split the 89R and then boost it all the way up with the Aftermurner. And I can confirm that was an amazing sound. And it does sound like a Telecaster. Which is kind of unexpected from a ESP Viper with 24 frets and EMG pickups. Now the big question is, would I take this ESP Viper with all of the mods over, let's say, Fishman Fluence modern pickups? And the answer is, yes, definitely. There is something I don't like about the Fishmans that EMG does for me. Would I prefer the ESP Viper over the Gibson HG Custom though? Mm, I think not. Would I own both? 
definitely which is what my friend does 